So, Mr. President, the analysis of what they're talking about and some of the things you've said, they are suggesting that you may declare victory if the early numbers favor you. At what point will you declare victory? When there's victory, if there's victory, I think I think we'll have victory. I think the the polls are, you know, suppression polls, and I think we'll have victory. But only when there's victory. I mean, you know, there's no reason to play games. And I think we'll have victory. I think we, you know, I look at it as being a very, um, you know, a very solid chance at winning. I don't, I don't know what the chances are. I don't know how they rate the chances, but I think we have a very solid chance of winning. You know, and when they say that they love rally. you, and when they say they love you, I like how you say, well, I love you too. Um, because when you love someone, that's always nice to hear back. But what has it been like? Have you loved the job or is it, has it been worth it because you've been under so much attack? <clears throat> Well, it's been mean. It's been, uh, you've dealt with horrible people like Shifty Schiff and Crazy Nancy and Crying Chuck, Chuck Schumer. You deal with some horrible people. You've said on the stump before, right, uh, Mr. President, I know you've said on the stump before, I wouldn't have gotten into this job or ran for this job if the previous administration wasn't, in your words, so bad. And some have said that Barack Obama's come out to be the bad cop, to go after you. One of the things he said last night was, He's going around spreading COVID uh, like he's a carrier because he cares more about having these big crowds than he does keeping people safe. Do you want to respond to the former president? Well, fortunately, he's drawing flies. He's not getting anybody to go listen to him too much. Actually, Fox puts him on more than anybody else, which is sort of shocking to me because Fox has changed a lot. And somebody said, what's the biggest difference between this and four years ago? And I say, Fox, it's much different. Uh, you still have great people. But, you're, you're three of them. But, but you know, Mr. But, President, can uh, I just say it's, one it's thing? With, with, what they try to do, what they try to do with Fox. In terms of. But politics. we just want to show Excuse both. Me. Unlike the other networks, they were trying to show both sides. So, hey, here's President Trump live. Here's Joe Biden live. Because we, we feel it's a responsibility to sell. Network. We to, report. They decide. Yeah. Right. So it, I don't think it's uh, an endorsement of anybody. But uh, go ahead. When, when President Obama speaks, does he get under your skin? They well, say in the that old days, uh, they he's the put, reason. You know, they wouldn't put Sleepy Joe Biden on every time he opened his mouth. You know, they had other networks for that, frankly. And it was run. You know, it's a much different operation. I'm just telling you, it's much different. And, uh, you know, right. I, and you have great people when you have Sean and you have uh, Laura and, you, have, you know, yourselves and you have some incredible Ainsley. people. Yeah. I'm just saying uh, Tucker's yeah. been great. You have, I think you've had, you really have incredible people, but it's yeah. much different. I could name some of your side players and uh, you'll interview, you had a period of time, I think you're still doing it, but you, you had Democrats on more than you had Republicans and look, it's different. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling people it's one of the, it's one of them, but right. uh, it's a very sad, to me, it's a very sad thing. Mr. President. I want to bring something up, um, and I believe this is going to be our last question. I don't, I don't think we have, I think we're being told this is the last question. You've got to go. Um, yeah. So. so what you just saw there might be one of Donald Trump's final interviews as president, or at least before he knows if he's been defeated in the 2020 presidential election. And it was awful. He comes off as exhausted, slurring pathetic, vindictive, petty, just so, so bad of an interview from the president and on a friendly show like Fox and Friends. First, you have him there in the first clip I showed you sounding like he's, you know, hung over from a party. He's slurring. He's low energy. He's tired. Everyone wants to talk about sleepy Joe Biden, but that's sleepy Donald Trump in that clip. There's no sense that he's confident that he could win tonight. And for the first time, maybe ever, you heard Trump say, if there's victory, even Donald Trump's facade is cracking a little bit because Trump until this point has always said, I will win. If I don't win, they've cheated. If there's victory, he almost never says that if word, almost never. And he said it this morning, he's getting a sense that there's a good chance he could lose. But there's other things here as well. You have Fox News hosts on the panel, on the Fox and Friends panel saying, you know, we just love when you say that you love people because 
they love you too, and don't you think this job has been so hard on you? Almost as if they're saying to a grandparent that they think should retire, maybe it's a good thing, sir, if you lose this election. Maybe there's a silver lining if you lose. Maybe the people don't deserve you, Mr. Trump. And if you lose, you can go back to relaxing and playing golf full time. So wouldn't it be nice if you lost the election, Grandpa? And like, it's got that kind of sense where Fox is comforting him about the looming potential defeat. But it doesn't matter that they kiss his butt there because then he goes on an attack on Fox News. He goes on to attack them and say, oh, every network's rigged, even Fox News. They hate me. They're lying about me. They're playing all of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Barack Obama's speeches. And they're saying awful things about me and the Republicans and Fox News is awful. And Fox tries to balance their sycophancy by saying, well, you know, sir, we just try to be fair. Unlike the other networks, we try to show both sides, blah, 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 blah. And even Fox has to push back against the president saying, sir, you know, maybe it's not right or fair or smart to criticize one of the few networks that, you know, supposedly gives you good, consistent coverage by calling us liberal hacks. And finally, at the end there, you know, they're asking him, you know, this is going to be your final question, sir. I know that you, you, we have to go on. We have to move on. And Steve Ducey basically says, you have to go. And I know he means it in the sense that, oh, you're a very busy man, Mr. President, and we don't want to take up your whole morning. But the subtext is, this is boring. This is sad. This is pathetic. And you have to go. We have to actually talk about more interesting things without, without some grumpy old man clogging up the airwaves. This is a very sad interview for Trump, but it's a very fitting interview for Donald Trump. It typifies that even Fox News is starting to move beyond him, starting to realize that if they're going to be relevant in the coming weeks and months and years, the Trump train needs to stop.